In the last video, we looked at Fick's Law. So let's recap that. Fick's Law. And what that says is that the volume of gas that diffuses across a membrane is going to be proportional to the surface area. It's also going to be proportional to the diffusion properties of the gas. And it's going to be proportional to the partial pressure difference across that membrane. It's going to be inversely proportional to the thickness of the membrane. So we did this in the last video. Let's just quickly recap what we mean by that. So let's draw out our blood gas barrier here. You have to, again, excuse my drawing capabilities. So we looked at each of these and we defined pretty much what we meant by, by each of the properties here. So we said that one, that um, the surface area is gonna affect the amount of diffusion Let's write that. We also said that the diffusion properties of the gas is going to affect uh, the amount of diffusion that can take place. So let's just put diffusion properties. Um, no, we can just put of the gas here, of gas. And we said that the partial pressure difference, so let's call this the pressure gradient, that's going to affect the amount of diffusion of diffusion that's going to take place and we also said that the thickness is going to the thickness of the of the barrier here that's going to affect the amount of diffusion that can take place and remember that we're talking about diffusion of a gas from the alveoli across this blood gas barrier into the blood okay and eventually that will then bind with hemoglobin and do all the things that it should do um, but we're just looking at this diffusion process so what I want to do in this video is just briefly touch on each one of these um, factors that are going to affect diffusion and then just give an example of, of either a disease process or something that can happen to the lung or something that we can do as healthcare professionals um, and how that is going to affect um, this diffusion. So I'm just going to give an example really based on each of these. So maybe let's start at the top and let's start with surface area. So if we just go, maybe I'll underline these in different colors so we can differentiate them here when I give my examples. So let's say surface area. So how is the surface area gonna affect the amount of diffusion in the lung? So we talked before about the, the greater the, the area of interface between blood and gas, the more diffusion that can take place. And, and that should be reasonably intuitive that the bigger this space is for gas to diffuse across, assuming that these blue dots aren't just here, they are everywhere in this alveoli and everywhere in every alveoli. Um, so the, the larger the area there is a communication between the two, the more diffusion is gonna take place. So what's an example of, of, of something that causes that or something that affects the surface area of the lung? So let's look at two things. Let's look one at just lung recruitment. So lung, recruitment so that we, we know that um, when people have lung degrees of lung collapse something something like atelectasis maybe someone's post-op surgery and they have some they have some atelectasis in their basal segments and they have difficulty oxygenating and really that's because the surface area of the lung that can take part in gas exchange is now reduced because this lung tissue is collapsed by that I mean it isn't aerated it doesn't have gas um, inflating and, and recruiting that tissue so lung recruitment um, really helps to improve the gas exchange properties of the lung and really we see that when people lose their recruitment lose recruitment of lung tissue like atelectasis that could be from post-op surgery when somebody's somebody's not deep breathing or it could be from a disease process such as ARDS causing atelectasis. And we see when people lose lung recruitment, when these alveolar units become deflated and, and, and don't have volume in them, um, we have issues with gas, ex gas exchange and issues with diffusion, okay? A second example might be something like, actually let's just put uh, maybe our post-op 
or uh, someone with ARDS. And obviously there's lots of examples of where lung recruitment is gonna affect gas exchange, but these are just two that you might see. Um, and secondly, let's think of a disease state like emphysema. I'm just gonna test my sp spelling abilities now, emphysema. One of the, one of the components of, of COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Um, and with emphysema, as people get parenchymal damage, and what we mean by parenchyma is like the lung tissue itself, so not the airways, not the bronchioles or the bronchus or the, any of those sort of main conducting airways, we're talking about the lung tissue itself when we talk about parenchymal issues. So people who have emphysema, get they get destruction of these alveolar units, whether it's due to the disease process itself, the uh, sort of smoking and bringing in carcinogens and um, damaging uh, damaging substances to the lung actually causes a breakdown and a loss of parenchymal tissue. So that's why people, uh, COPD patients often have this sort of what we call loss of radial traction, which means that if we had, let's, we're diverting a little bit here, but let's say we had another alveolar unit here and there's some sort of traction between the t between these units, and let's say we had another one over here. There's traction between the units, so that as the lung inflates, these help to pull each other open. So in emphysema, a component of COPD, people can get a breakdown of, of sort of the collagen fibers in the lungs and all the elastin and collagen and, and, and sort of the properties in the, and the fibers in the lung which help keep the lung elastic and keep up that recoil. So they lose that, and consequently they lose lung volume. They lo they lose gas exchange volume, and it's it's one that we often overlook because we think of people with COPD having big, large lungs, um, which they do because they they become hyperinflated as a result of their disease process. But actually, their available surface area for gas exchange gets reduced because of the, the destruction of the lung tissue. So emphysema causes a destruction of lung tissue decrease parenchyma. Again, spelling challenge here for me, parenchyma, um, which causes a decreased surface area available for gas exchange. Okay, let's go to give a quick example of the next one, of our diffusion properties of the gas. Oh, excuse my phone there, I'll have to put that on silent. Um, let's have a little look at diffusion properties of the gas. In the first video that we touched on and defined this formula and touched on these things, I gave the example of, um, I gave the example of um, carbon dioxide and oxygen and compared those two as gases. And so we, let's compare CO2 versus oxygen. And we said, if we remember that the diffusion properties here are inversely proportional to the square root of the molecular weight and directly proportional to the gas's solubility. Okay, and this is our diffusion diffusion properties or our, oh God, I'm making a lot of noise here, aren't I? Um, I have to put every device I have next to me on silent now. So this diffusion property is the solubility of the gas um, is directly proportional to the solubility. So the more soluble the gas is, the faster it diffuses but it's inversely proportional to the, the molecular weight of the gas, so how big the gas molecules are. So the bigger they are, the, small, the slower they're gonna diffuse. So when we look at carbon dioxide and oxygen, these have very similar molecular weights. So what, to make that simplified, they're similar in size. So they're similar size. But CO2 is much more soluble. Carbon dioxide is more soluble okay and it's much more soluble so as a result carbon dioxide diffuses around 20 times faster than oxygen so therefore diffuses 20 times faster so that's just an example of how the diffusion properties of the gas the gases themselves influence the overall volume of, di of diffused gas. So yes, there's structural and uh, components to diffusion in terms of the surface area and how thick this barrier is, but there's also, you have to consider the gases themselves. So that's just an example of how CO2 diffuses much quicker than oxygen, simply because it's more soluble. And that's a property of its diffusion characteristics. The reason it diffuses quicker is because 
it is more soluble with a similar size. So that's where this diffusion constant comes in. It's basically just a way of us sort of factoring in what type of gas is diffusing across the lung. Okay, let's go to the next one. Because really this next one here, pressure gradient, this is quite important. Because this is really what we do when we, when we give people oxygen, right? We said in the last couple of videos that the, the reason that gas diffuses across from the alveoli into the capillary is that the partial pressure of the gas in the alveoli is higher than it is in the capillary. And as these molecules don't like being near each other, they want to expand into free space, they diffuse across this membrane to, until they reach an equilibrium across here. Okay, so if the pressure, partial pressure, of, so let's say oxygen in the alveoli here is higher than it is in the blood, then there's a, a pressure gradient here. There's a diffusion gradient which, which is created. And that's what we're looking at here with this P1, P2. So if we increase the pressure here in the alveoli uh, with keeping this pressure in the blood reasonably constant, then the, the diffusion gradient gets steeper. And that's pretty much what we do when we give people oxygen, right? So let's put oxygen therapy. When we give people oxygen, let me just change so I've got the right color here. When we um, give people supplemental oxygen, remember there's oxygen in the air, so there's still gonna be oxygen in the alveoli if someone's breathing air. But when we give people supplemental oxygen, what we're doing is increasing the concentration of oxygen. And what that does is it increases the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli. So I, I'll try and represent this by just drawing in more of these dots. And in reality, this is kind of a, this isn't really a, a great way of describing it because they'd obviously be very, very condensed in, um, in a gaseous state anyway. But th this should give you a little bit of an idea of how this is a little bit more concentrated than let's say, let's say this. Say this was our baseline here. Let's draw a little line between them to separate them. Let's say that we're looking at two situations here. We have, this might be somebody breathing just air. So let's say this is someone breathing air which we know to be 21% oxygen. And let's say we, they needed a little bit more oxygen, so we put them here on maybe 50% oxygen. So they're, they're breathing in 50% oxygen. So you can see how it's more concentrated in the alveoli now, which means that the partial pressure of, of oxygen in the alveoli is now higher. And that creates a steeper gradient. So this is, that's why oxygen diffuses quicker across the barrier, which is why we give people supplemental oxygen. Okay, so giving people oxygen, this pressure gradient works by increasing our, our what we call delta P, the difference. So we're, we're really increasing the difference in P1 and P2. And by doing that, we create a steeper gradient, a much steeper gradient for the oxygen to travel down than here. Okay, so that's how we look at sort of our, um, how this pressure gradient influences our, um, our diffusion. And this is really the basis of why we give people supplemental oxygen. Okay, let's look lastly just at this, um, at a thickness and how the thickness is going to influence um, the amount of diffusion across the barrier. So remember that we said, um, there's a couple of videos back when we, when we kind of went into the anatomy of the blood gas barrier. We went through all of those structures and we went through going from the alveoli and then across the the sort of capillary and the thelium and into the plasma and we crossed over the red blood cell and we went through all of those, we broke down all of those steps and we sort of tracked the pathway that an oxygen molecule has to go. And we said that whilst this barrier here is actually extremely thin, this, this barrier that separates the oxygen, uh, sorry, that separates the gas in the alveoli from the blood is, is actually extremely thin. Um, however, um, it can become thickened so when it's at its normal state in a healthy person, this barrier is very, very thin, which allows for rapid diffusion of gas across that barrier because it's, because it's thin. Um, however, if we get to disease states which cause thickening of this barrier, diseases such, like, such as pulmonary fibrosis, let's just use that as an example. Pulmonary fibrosis. My writing's not very neat today, is it? So the pulmonary fibrosis causes a thickening of this alveolar capillary membrane. And as a result, if you look at it, the, the molecules of gas, that, again, we'll use oxygen as the example, now have to travel further. So it's gonna take them longer. 
Okay, so if you thicken the barrier, thicken, thicken the AC membrane, um, equals slow diffusion, right? It's gonna slow down the diffusion because the, the oxygen molecules or the gas molecules now have further to travel. Okay, so pulmonary fibrosis is a good example of that. But perhaps a more common example is just edema. Let's just talk about edema. And, by that, and we obviously will mean pulmonary edema at this point. Pulmonary edema. So we've, we, most of us may have heard or seen of pulmonary edema, and it's just a fluid buildup in the lung. And more fluid in the lung, and it, gets, it goes into this interstitial space. Remember we talked about the interstitial space between the capillaries and the alveoli. And as, as pulmonary edema starts to accumulate, that engorges these um, interstitial spaces. So now, again, we have an increased distance. So that's probably the best way to view this, is an increased diffusion distance. Increased diffusion distance. Okay, so as we thicken the barrier, and remember that as this goes up in this equation, as the thickness increases, the volume of gas that diffuses decreases. And that's because of the diffusion distance. So let's, that's actually quite good. Let's circle this. Okay, so thickening the barrier leads to an increased diffusion distance. And that obviously affects how much volume of gas that we can diffuse. So we've quickly gone through these, and we've gone through surface area diffusion properties, the pressure gradient and the thickness, the main sort of parts of fixed law here. And we've kind of just given examples of how each one of those clinically um, affects gas exchange and affects diffusion.